are now listening to the Life of Product podcast. Yeah, what up, what up, man? It's the boy Product. You're now locked into the Life of Product podcast. This is episode 42. Shouts out to everybody that rock with episode 41. Episode 41 was called It's Been a Year. And a lot of y'all had your minds in the gutter. When I said it's been a year, it was a year before I had went back home to visit. But today's episode 42. Today's episode 42 and it's special because I got my good friend Ivan Jones in the building with me. What's good, brother? What's up, man? Good, man. Everything's, yeah. everything's love. I see you, man. You spiff. You got the button up on today. That's what's up, man. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Yo, you are the, the fourth dude I'm interviewing. Oh, wow. The second on camera. You okay. know what I'm saying? So okay. shout out to you for coming through, man. I appreciate that. We a lot of y'all don't know me. I even have a, a great history. So I told y'all before, um, I finished high school in North Carolina, and he was one of the first friends that I made, man. So right. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. We had some we had some good times. Full circle, yeah. Some things we can't talk about. Now we, <laughs> <laughs> we but um, we grew up, man. We ain't gonna talk about a lot of stuff, man. We now we got kids down there, yeah. we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We we grow, grow. I do want to tell a story though. It's a PG 13 story, it's not gonna incriminate <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Yo, remember that time. When you was at once the same state and you came back through here and you hit me up and you was like, yo, let's go to Buffalo's. And I was like, I don't know if you remember, because I had I had the red grain in. So right. I was like, yo, look, you was like, yo, let's go to Buffalo's. I was like, yo, you want me to drive? You was like, no, nah, I'm gonna drive. And then your windshield wipers ain't work. And it was pouring <laughs> down rain. <laughs> That's the acro. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And you had your head out the window like Ace Ventura. Oh, and man, it was real? like pouring down. Yeah, it yeah, was that pouring was a down very expensive rain. Repair. I just couldn't get oh it down, man. man, we yeah, we we'd have some funny nights. Remember that night <laughs> we was hanging out? And your your uh your gas thing ain't work, and you ran out of gas, and the cop pulled up and was like, "Yo, y'all good?" We was like, "Yeah." And then he ain't help us; he just pulled off. And we had to put. I had to push the car. Wow. Yeah, it was it was it was crazy. Oh, yeah, we yeah we had some good nights, man. Humbling, humbling experiences. Okay, I right, I got I got one more story. Like, I got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. didn't prep me for this. I didn't one. prep you for that. Well, I, I purposely did. All right, so gotcha. it was it was another night. It was me and my brother. So my sister used to live in Winston Salem, right? And then we was in town. So I hit you up, right? Because remember, my brother wasn't a drinker, so we was like right. chilling. We was getting it in. We went to this one club, and that's when I had the brag grain in, but it had the sensor problem. Right. I don't know if you remember the sensor problem. So we're walking into the first spot. As we're walking in, a dude literally gets flung out the door, and then he runs to his car, starts shooting right in front of us, and then my car wouldn't start because of the sensor. So we had to leave our car and run like across the street because the dude was just like wow. shooting. Ever you remember that? I don't. I seem like I would. Yeah. Yo, but um, I believe you. Probably because we was drinking that night. You know what I'm saying? Probably. And so then, then probably. this I actually sobered up at that, that point. Yeah. Then, then a girl pulls up in front of us and like a Honda screams and starts uh, running, leaves her car, and a random dude steals her car just to get out of there. Wow. Yeah. Like yeah. Winston. Yeah. So wow. I end up getting the sensor fixed the next week. I was like, I gotta get this fixed because next time there's a shootout, we gotta get out of here. Wow. Yeah. It was crazy. And, and my dumb ass, I parked right in front of the club. Wow. <laughs> Which I'll never ever do again. Yeah. It was a good time. But we had fun that night. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah we, 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 I can't remember that, but I, I believe it great happened. Times. Been great times. Great times. So listen, if my kids are listening and if your kids are listening, <laughs> stay out of clubs. <laughs> don't club when you get older. Right. If you do, don't park in front of the club. Park like yeah. <laughs> somewhere in the back, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But it was great times. But you ever you ever look at life from when you were younger and look at yourself now and be like, yo, I'm happy where I'm at. A lot yeah. of a lot of people don't do that. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. It's always Appreciate what God has done. I definitely mm-hmm. give God all the credit because I know. Yeah. I remember being like, you know, if I can, I can share this, man. Yeah, absolutely. I remember like really just doing just enough in high school, mm-hmm. and my grades being like below average, and not knowing mm-hmm. if I would have a chance to go to college. Yeah, and then getting into a college. Yeah, and then um, actually flunking out after the first year. Yeah, and then getting a chance to go back. Yeah, and then graduating. Yeah, and now you know. Very, very deep in my profession as a, mm-hmm. in the recreation field. Yeah. Now, right now, you're in Charlotte, right? I'm in Charlotte, yeah. Oh, how many how many years have you been in Charlotte? Uh, 15 years. Yo, I think Charlotte is a special city, man. And a lot of... Remember when they was first building Charlotte? They right. didn't even have the whole university area. Yeah. A lot of people was, like, trying to compare it to, like, Atlanta. But mm-hmm. I, I never... I, I've always liked Charlotte more than Atlanta. Right. I feel like Atlanta is a dope city, but I feel like... The size of it can't accommodate everything. I feel like there's too much packed into it. Yeah. But I feel like Charlotte is special because Charlotte never really tried to like be like anywhere else. Like once you get in Charlotte, you're in Charlotte. And there's, but what's dope about it, there's people from like all over the world that live in Charlotte. And the food is great. You know, just the whole atmosphere of like uptown and stuff. When you, when you first moved there, because, you know, from coming from Hickory, North Carolina, which is a little smaller, was it overwhelming? Well, you know, I went from Hickory through it through Winston Salem to yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. Um, no, because it never wasn't. Um, I think my first job I worked at, uh, I worked for 
I was like working in an adoption agency. Okay. So I traveled a lot through the job. Yeah. yeah. So it, I never have been overwhelmed with Charlotte. Never yeah. Had, I guess growing up, my mom took us there very quite often. Yeah. But I never have been overwhelmed. And, yeah. And what's funny about Charlotte talking about, I remember when I was growing up, all I heard was the crime on the news. Yeah. Yeah. And I told my mom, my mom was like, we're going to move to Charlotte. I said, if, if we move to Charlotte, if we move to Charlotte <laughs> I'm going to stay back with your parents. <laughs> and um, mm-hmm. of course, Fell in love in college. Yeah. My wife was there. So yeah. that's dope. It made, I just moved there and yeah. it's been home ever since. That's what's up, man. That's I think that's beautiful, man. And like you said, a lot of people, they only see like the crime yeah. on the news and stuff like that. But like I before I went back to New York, I used to be in Charlotte a lot. And uh-huh. a lot of that, I wasn't around a lot of that. There's ways for you to move and finagle around through that city without even being. I think I think that's a Anything can happen. Yeah, anyway, absolutely. Right? Yeah. But I think, you know, a lot of people that get caught up in that kind of, I, I don't want to say they bring it on themselves. I feel bad about that. But is it safe to say that? You know what I mean? A lot of people, once they step into that lifestyle, that's you know, what it is. You there's know? random acts of violence. It's, it's it. real. You know, I can't mm-hmm. walk in fear. Um, but yeah. like some of those areas that I, I heard about growing up. Yeah. Um, the Sugar Creeks, the Alabama Oh, yeah. Road, yeah, man. The South, the South Boulevard. Yeah, those areas I I work in. Mm-hmm. The, I work in I work in the, uh, East Charlotte. East yeah. Charlotte can be rough. I believe it. I've been through that, man. Yeah, just, like, you just, know what I'm saying? So Friday, the the guy pulled his gun on the police and Word. police. I mean, I guess it was defense. They shot and killed the man. That's crazy. You man. know, that's right up the street. In fact, I was that's down the street. Word. I was down the street <laughs> when it happened. Working. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a street away. Yeah. But I just I can't walk in fear. No, I'm you like, can't. You know, walking in purpose. Helping people at the rec center mm-hmm. and do life coaching. Yeah, uh, but but Hickory can be bad too. I mean, yeah, yo, I didn't know Hickory was getting this bad because when I came yeah. back here, um, it was around this time last year, and I was watching the news. I was like, "Yo, word, this is what y'all doing?" Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's you know, what I mean, first thing I did, I went bought my mom's burger, my nine. <laughs> you know, what right. I'm saying? Listen, man, because I'm a firm believer. I, I, I like I pray a lot. I pray three, four times a day, but I'm a firm believer in protecting myself. Yeah. You know what? What I hate though, like about where we're at as black men right now, I feel like a lot of us black men, we we get situations, a lot of situations, not not the random acts of violence, right? Mm-hmm. But as far as black men in action, I feel like as black men, we get so many situations misconstrued yeah. that where three, four, five lives could have been saved just by talking stuff out. Absolutely, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, I, and I think that I think that people such as me, people such as you, I feel like it's kind of like our duty. We at a certain point we have to do our due diligence and really try to instill that in a lot of these young dudes. But it's hard sometimes. You ever find yourself talking to a wall, like whenever you try to talk to younger people about this stuff? Absolutely. I think we struggle with emotions. You know, we like, do. It's yes. like if a man cries, yes, he's still viewed as weak. Thank you for saying and that. That's not that's not always true. It's not. Um, there's like the, it's like. Think of because he's a boy, he's not a teenager. Play football mm-hmm. that makes him tough. These things are so backwards. Yeah, but I man. think I think it's having balance, which is one of the hardest things to have. Yes. have to you be you be able to express yourself. Yeah, and not be viewed as um, weak. Yes, or less than. Yes, yeah. Um, I'm glad you said that, man, because I feel like in the black community, I feel like the quote unquote OGs. Not, I, I don't want to use profanities, and I know you're man and God, but I feel like they're full <laughs> of shit. I feel like they were full of shit for years because. I feel like the, a lot of the OGs and the older guys were leading us down a path of failure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like their rules, whether it was street rules, whether it was life rules, rules of being black was totally wrong. Right. It, was, it was totally wrong. And we weren't taught this stuff. A lot of us had to figure it out. And well, I mean, I had my father there, which, which was great, but I still had outside influence of me growing up in the hood. I come from a really rough hood, but a lot of black men didn't have that in-house influence and stuff like that. And a lot of them were taught wrong. And they had to like do a lot of trial and error stuff. Yeah. After they grew up, does it ever hurt you when you see that? You ever see like a grown man and you like, okay, you was raised totally wrong. Does it ever bother you? It bothers me, but I think, and I'm, they didn't know any better. Yeah. It's gener- I think as as blacks, we, we already started with, out with our backs against the wall. Yeah, we are. So they didn't know any better. So Thank I think you for seeing as that. a as a father, I'm a father of three, mm-hmm. and um, I think the generation before me yeah. was, was good, but some of the decisions they made, yeah, they didn't know any better. They didn't. So I have responsibility yeah. now that I am much aware. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is to is to redirect that. Yes. That thought. Yeah. Redirect that way of bringing mm-hmm. their kids up in terms of like. Yeah. It's okay to express yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in just terms of like you know the whole you got to go to you got to go to um, I definitely push higher education, mm-hmm. but there's different paths to success. There Not is. always you can go to high school and make the best grades in the world. Mm-hmm. Go to a college, 
and still be lost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is, yeah. I, I know people like you can that, be man. Very lost. And that's scary because now you're lost, but you're in debt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's one thing to be lost, but don't be lost and in debt. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I tell people I tell my sons all the time, playing catch up in life is hard. Yeah. And the further you go and you veer off, this is the, now you gotta do a 180 right. and, and come back. And that's very hard. Hold, hold that door for a second. We gotta uh take a quick break. We have a sponsorship from Inca FM, my distributor. We will be right back with the Life of Product Podcast. Jay, what up, what up, man? It's the boy Product from the Life of Product Podcast. We are now back with the second part of the show. Shouts out to Inca, man. You guys have really been like doing right by the kid. I, I appreciate you guys on every level, you know. Say I please excuse the profanity from time to time. I'm getting better. I might not be better next time, but <laughs> I got my boy Ivan Jones on the show, man. You uh you, you told me recently you took your kids to uh to Myrtle Beach. Um I took my kids to Myrtle Beach over the summer. It was, it was great, man. What what was that like? What's what's the vibes out there right now? Who went for the travel ball? Oh, okay. Uh, travel ball. But I, I was saying off the air, we was talked about- um, Yeah. Like discipline, discipline and, and stuff kids. like that. Me and my wife was on like a, uh, I think it was a, it was a gambling gambling cruise. Okay. You know, they had That's what's up, man. I didn't, know, I didn't know they had that. It's several years ago. It's okay. probably casino, casino cruise. That's how okay. I say that. I got to look into that. It was about seven or eight years ago, and we was talking to this older couple. They was like, um, I don't know how whoopings came up. Yeah. And the lady, she was like, you know- what if every time you did something wrong, somebody beat the hell out of you? Mm. And I was like, wow, I never thought about that. Because we make so many mistakes yeah. as adults. Yeah. And so what I was, earlier I was mentioning like how sometimes a generation before us, mm -hmm. um, they, they don't know, they don't yeah. know any better. Yeah. And so that's one thing I've, I've tried to do. You know, mm -hmm. I do believe sometimes you do have to. Yeah. But as kids, get, oh, you can't whoop. You can't nah, whoop. You, at a 15-year-old. Yeah, yeah. At you a certain Because I, I, was, I was about that life for my kids when they was younger. But yeah. after they got to a certain point, I, I took initiative to talk to them more. Right. And she's like, I'll put the fear of God in them. Trust yeah, me. Absolutely. But yeah, at uh, a certain yeah. point, I was like, I'm not going to hit them no more. Right. I want them to learn, you know, there's other ways to, that they could feel consequences right. from that. So I, I've never looked at it like that. No. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Because I come from a household. Nah, listen, I got my ass whooped growing right. up. But the good thing about that, I, I was getting in trouble here and there as a kid. I stopped getting in trouble after a certain point. I was like, nah, this is not worth it. Right. And, I, and I told myself, I said, all right, if these ass whoopings from my moms is this serious, yeah. what if I grow up and I get in real trouble? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the way I look. So I, that's a good way to look at yeah. it. Yeah. Really there has to be accountability. You know, whether yeah. you're taking, but there has to be some conversation. Too. Yeah. You got to try to figure out what is really going on with that child. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's another thing and too, way, man. And ways to, you know, kids, kids like adults are incentive driven. Yeah. So you have to, but you have to, you got to have that conversation. You, you can't just to. be, you whooping them, you know, mm -hmm. you take the phone. And I'm I, glad you pulled that And I, and I do that. Out. I take the phone. I take certain oh, yeah. things, but I do try to make the time to like, okay, what's going on mm -hmm. and what can we, yes. you know what I'm saying? What mm -hmm. can we do different? Yes. You know? And you, you know, like I, I I pointed out a while back, a kid, say you take a kid that's 14 years old, right? right. Tomorrow's Monday. They haven't lived Monday yet. Monday is a future. Monday is a new day once yeah, it gets absolutely. here. They haven't experienced Monday, November 8th yet in yeah. life. Every day is a new day for them. And I, I feel like when we was coming up, life was serious. I feel like it's more serious now because everything is more accessible now. Yeah. A kid could go online right now and buy weed from somebody and they could yeah. drop it off. Yeah. Uh, they could go online and look at a whole sex video yeah, and stuff we'll like that. You know what I'm saying? So everything now, they're learning at a faster right. pace. Everything from education to life stuff yeah. right now. But also, they're also, um, they're also, I feel like they're also being hurt by this stuff as well too, man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, definitely talk about like, you talk about like, um, like I said, access to drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can click over for free yeah. and see someone having sex. Yeah, it's crazy, you know, right? Uh, you can see, you can see it all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, they definitely are. They definitely yeah. are. They definitely have access yeah. to um, a lot of evil, but they also mm -hmm. have access to a lot of good too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go on YouTube yes. and figure out like a math problem. We didn't have that. We didn't. Have, nah, man. I remember being yeah. a kid, and when I was growing up in Brooklyn, I used to have to go to my cousin crib because they had a whole bookshelf full of encyclopedias, right? Yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. So I, if I couldn't find what I needed at the library, I would go to my cousin Damon crib. Yeah. Go, you know, now. Look, go on your phone, your laptop, your tablet. Yeah, you got the answers right What's there. What's the library, man? I look, yo, I drove past. The, I was in Brooklyn <laughs> last weekend, and I drove past the, the old library by my crib, and yeah. I told my son, I said, "You, I said, you don't even know how much money I owe them. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm never paying it. Yeah. I ain't never. Listen, yeah. man, I love y'all, but I'm never paying it, man. <laughs> Funny thing is, I went back years when I first went back to visit. Right, it was like four blocks from my old crib, right. so I go there. I wouldn't like check a book out because I, I kind of like reading off and on, right? Mm -hmm. So. 
I I didn't have my life. The old library card I had was expired. So they yeah. pulled my name up. The ladies, right before she checked out, she was like, she had this look on her face. And I was like, you all right? She's like, oh, you owe us money from like 97. I said, all right. Well, yes, I ain't getting this because you ain't never getting that bread. <laughs> Yo, listen, man. It is what it is. But everything everything's accessible, man. And um, so also, for the people that, know, that don't know, you were one of the first uh, certified coaches in, in the Charlotte area. Yes, that's what's up, man. Congratulations Thank on you. that. How Thank did how, was it a hard process? Of well, back that? in like nine or ten, I think it was ten when I became certified. I got yeah. certified through the Certified Life Coaching Federation. Yeah. No one was really, I mean, no one was coaching. I yeah, mean, it was now it's a bunch of like yeah coaches. in the area. They was, oh, okay. it was more of like an international thing. Oh, okay, okay. You know, uh, I think the company that I was working with was based out of Canada. Okay, um, but I was one of the first certified life coaches. Yeah. in Charlotte. Uh, I want to believe definitely probably one of the first ten black. I'm sure one of the first that's crazy. black because no one was no one was <clears throat> coaching, no one was certified at the time. That's dope, man. I'm, I'm now certified through Tony Gaston, who, okay. who, who works a lot with the celebrities. Um, okay, that's what's mainly up. NFL, the NBA. Mm. I, I went through his academy. Yeah, he got certified. I'm actually on um, I'm on mymentor.com. That's how okay. you can find me. If you want to, yeah, some transformation. Coaching. I'll make sure that we, we put all of that in the description so okay. when people go on streaming, they can check that out. But remember, remember that, but also for y'all that won't remember it, all you're gonna have to do is scroll down and check it out. Absolutely, that's dope, man. Was was it was it a discouraging process though? No, it wasn't. Okay, and, and I've been coached, I think I've, I've always been like that's why most people associate me with being uh, mm-hmm. like a pastor or something, yeah, because like I've always been like I think an encourager, yeah, always been pretty wise for my age, yeah, and so um, then experience as a Mm-hmm. You know, husband, mm-hmm. you know, 14, 15 years. Yeah. Come September, father of three. Yeah. And like I said, I went through, I've had ups and downs that I've had to overcome from mm-hmm. not having a healthy relationship with my father yeah. until, you know, my 30s. Yeah. You know. Now, um, what, 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 what was, when you finally got to that point when you guys had a healthy relationship, did you ever look back and be like, man, I wish we did it years ago? Yeah, but I think, you know, and I, mm-hmm. I want to say first that me, me and my dad, we were at a real good place. That's great, And man. this is no no attempt to put him down, but mm-hmm. I did have access to my father yeah. when I was growing up. I come from, a, my mother was the sole provider. I, I remember that. She was that. a sole, um, you know, yeah. rock. You know, yeah. she was carrying, she was leading the train. Yeah. And she had a lot of support, but she made it, mm-hmm. she made it happen without her. I definitely wouldn't be in this position I am right now. Yeah. Um, and happy birthday to her. She turned 60. Today. That's what's up, man. That's so birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I hope she turned up. Uh, yeah, she, she knows how to have a good time. But but he wasn't there. Not, there were yeah. attempts to, re, as I got older, there were attempts to try to establish a relationship. Yeah. And I went, got to a dark place, got yeah. frustrated, disrespect him one time real bad. Yeah. And then I just felt like God was like, you're not mm-hmm. going to be able to prosper. Yeah. Gain, um, mm-hmm. obtain certain things until you get that right. Mm. So I forgave my dad. I yeah. really forgave my dad, and I think probably my late twenties, he started coming down. Mm-hmm. Um, his kids definitely they have a good relationship with him. That's great. He's been a part of life, and um, that's really good. And man. I'm, I'm it's, it's good now, but I, my goal is to be it to be great. Yeah, and and, um, I, and I'm sure it wasn't easy. And, and like I tell, I, I've I've had I have both my parents in my life. Even though my, and my the one thing I can say about my parents, they didn't have the best relationship, but they was like they stayed. They was one of those couples that stayed together so many years for the kids right. or whatever. And as I got older, and when they whenever they separated, they gave me the op- option of where I wanted to go. But I can it for me having a failed relationship and my kids seeing that it's hard. You know, you know what I'm saying in a situation like that. So I I didn't I've never known how it was to not grow up with the fa- without right. a father gotcha. and stuff like that. So when I hear people like you tell me your stories. I feel bad for y'all, and I'm also happy that you got to that point yeah. where you were able to make amends with them and things like that. It had to feel like a, a weight was lifted off your shoulders. Yeah, that too. But check this out. You know, I never had my father was not around. Yeah, but I never went never went without a positive male influence. That's great. And I, and I had to be an adult to realize that yes. because I always had my a grandfather. Uh-huh. You know, he's 87 years old today. Mm-hmm. Um, he's He's always been there for me. That's great. I always said my uncles, and they have gone, they, they have passed on, but they yeah. have always mm-hmm. treated me like I was their son. That's great. Um, they always had coaches. Yeah. When I play youth sports, they've always kind of filled in that gap. And that's the whole concept of it takes a village. It takes a village, but I didn't realize yeah. that stuff until I became yeah. an adult. You yeah. Wise, you look back, you're like, you know, yeah. God has always provided. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure it wasn't his intent for my dad not to be around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always covered the games. Exactly, exactly, you know? man. And yo, know, I feel like the whole concept of it takes a village. I feel like we're losing that nowadays. Yeah. I feel like I feel like a lot of us, we're, a lot of 
black, I, I talk on a black community a lot. I can't really speak on the white community. Or I can't speak on the Asian community. I'm a black man. Right. I feel like us black people now, we're becoming so disengaged and disconnected with what's important and the core, a lot of the core values that our communities had years ago. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that gap is becoming wider. I don't feel like, I, don't, I honestly don't think in 10 years we're going to fill it. I don't see that yeah. because I feel like because so many of us are so full of ourselves. That's true. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're so worried about likes on Instagram and twerk videos. We're not seeing a bigger picture. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? We're not seeing that. Like, I understand Sunday fun days are great, but I don't really often see people on Sundays waking up and saying, all right, we're going to get these 20 families together. We're going to get these kids together. We're going to cook one big meal. We're going to have a cookout, barbecue. I don't see none of yeah. that no more. Yeah, that has went away, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And I think growing up, and no no one ever, my, my mom, their generation would say, you know, and it goes back to like, you know, you would get a beating here, mm-hmm. then you would get a beating when you get home. Mm-hmm. I already said that they ain't always helping. Nah. But there was accountability. Yes. You know, it's like, hey, you know, people, kids cussing in front of, well, you know, not, yeah. we, not to say we didn't cuss when we were 14 and 15, yeah. but we saw an adult coming. You no, know, you shut up. That you, was it yeah, right you, there. You couldn't, you couldn't do that. Now and all they had to say was like, to me, they would say, do I need to call Shannon? Exactly. And that was like, no, you don't. Yeah, exactly. You don't. Please exactly. don't. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But now it's like, yeah. Call them. What, what? So what? Yo, my mom used to tell me she when I was a kid, she was like, I don't care if you're 14, 15. If I ever see you cursing in the street, I'm gonna beat you. Yeah. Up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I still to this day, I still don't I still don't feel right cussing in front. I don't That's good. I try not to cuss, but I still don't mm-hmm. I don't cuss in front of my mom. Yeah. Um and if I do, I'm immediately like, okay, that was wrong, you know. Yeah, corrected myself and yeah. apologize. Because you still got that and still it's respect, man. Yeah, absolutely. Respect. All right, hold that thought. We're gonna take one more quick break. We're gonna come back with the third part of the life of product podcast. Shouts out to everybody that supported the show. We still have sponsorship slots available. Holla at the kid. Yeah, what up, what up, man? It's the boy Product. We're now back with the Life of Product Podcast. I'm with my good friend, Ivan Jones. I appreciate you, man, uh, for coming through here to the show today and doing this interview, man. No you, you know what I'm saying? This is very spiffy button up. I'm in here, <laughs> I'm in here in a Jets hoodie yeah, for all y'all that's listening on streaming. We're probably like owing something for like eight seasons straight. I don't I don't know. Shouts out to the Jets. I love y'all. I love all New York teams, even though y'all disappoint me, with the exception of the Yankees and the Rangers and the Nets. And it's looking like the Knicks too. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Maybe within a season or two, we'll be back where we should be. But I ain't gonna hold my breath for that. But um, so back to I want to talk about um the things that you're doing right now. Um, you you you're over two recreation centers. Yes, in Charlotte. In East Charlotte. Is yeah. is uh-huh. that hard? That sounds like it's got to be like the time management factor. Yeah, that that's key. That's key. Okay. Are some major responsibilities. Yeah. But I have a strong team at both sites. That's what's up. So, but it, it you know it does have its challenges, but it's more rewarding than anything. That's that's great, you know, man. I'm, I was a recreational kid. I yeah. lived in Brown. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know yeah. what I'm saying? Actually, so I went to the Brown Pen a few times when I came out here. It was cool, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think stuff like that really helps the community because you got a lot of kids that don't have an outlet. Yeah, you're you know right. What I mean, I, I know you see some crazy stuff. I hear some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. I see some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely, I try to hold the kids accountable. With yeah. me, you know, I'm gonna say something, mm-hmm. especially cussing. You got your pants down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just talking any, you know, just yeah. I'm gonna call you out, you yeah. know, uh, out of love, but that's just I'm gonna hold you accountable. Yeah, see, it's the you. pants sagging part for me. I don't like that. Like, yeah, they, they got. I, I've always had a problem with that. Yeah. even when I was a kid, I just never saw the point in it. I'm not, and I'm not talking about nobody, but fam. Yeah, I think these kids take it a little too far nowadays. Yeah, with the whole pants sagging and stuff like that. I don't want to see your whole. Butt print. Yeah, they're not saying they're down. Actually, <laughs> seriously, it's like, man, they're down. I mean, seriously, it's crazy, yeah. man. I was, I was, I was in Queens one time, right? So a lot of y'all, for y'all, for all my New Yorkers listening, y'all know about Jamaica Avenue over by the Coliseum and whatever. So there's an area in Queens called Jamaica Avenue, and um, I'm walking down Jamaica Avenue. They have like this tabernacle type church, and there was a kid. This had to be like 2012, 2013. A kid is walking past us. It's like middle of the summertime, no shirt on. He's got his, his cargo shorts down below his butt. I mean, and it's, you know, there's no way you can't see it. Right. And the kid walks, and there was a grown man next to me. Big brolic, looked like he just got out of jail. Craziest thing ever, the grown man stops in the middle of, like, walking down the street and just zeroes in on the kid. And right. it looked like he wanted to rape the kid in the middle of the street. Wow. And me and, like, two, three other people, like, do you see this? You know what I mean? Yeah. So for y'all kids out there that's doing that, Really take some of this stuff in consideration. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because and and I, <laughs> even though it's funny to me, I'm not trying to butter this joke, but a lot of stuff is a trigger for people. Everything from like from from sexual assault to like drugs. Everything is a trigger. You don't know what a trigger is gonna be for these people. For so for y'all grown, almost grown boys out there, all grown young dudes, 
sagging your pants. Just watch out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to you don't want to see somewhere. that same dude from Jamaica Avenue coming at you, man. You know what I mean? But this is I think it's really interesting the the habits of these kids nowadays, whatever. And East Charlotte is kind of not like the best area, right? It's something like isn't East I mean it's gotten better. I don't want to put it down. There's there's different parts of all parts of Charlotte. East Charlotte is growing. Okay. It's definitely growing and people are invested. So okay. it's, it's flipping, it's yeah. just changing. Um yeah, it has changed a lot in the last few years. So it is it is progressing, I should say. Yeah. I don't uh, want to give it a bad bad rap, but there's yeah. a lot of work to still do. I wonder I wonder yeah. if um with with all the investing coming if they're going to see like full gentrification coming to to Charlotte because I I feel like it's coming down here. It ain't hit, really hit yet, but I feel like it's on yeah. the way. Hope you we can I mean? keep the hope we can keep the history and keep the people mm-hmm. who want to be there there. Yeah. Um not forcing them out or anything like that. Yeah. Or making them make very that would uncomfortable be crazy, decisions. Man. But, um, mm-hmm. but East Charlotte's up and coming. It's probably the most diverse area mm-hmm. in, in all of Charlotte. Yeah. You know, so. Now, when, when, when you managing um, what what both rec- recreation centers, right? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> for what <laughs> your, for the recreation centers that you manage? Like, do you have one? Is one of them like your favorite? Do you prefer to be at one over the other? No, I like both. I primarily work in um, in the the larger one. Okay. I try to. Kramer saying the name, but I so I mean I, I like both of them. I yeah, both of my all. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I primarily work mm-hmm. in one. Yeah. Now one or the other. What's what's for the for the young kids in East Charlotte listening? Because I got a lot of listeners in Charlotte. Okay. Check the analytics. Okay. Right now, a lot of younger crowd are starting to listen to the show. Tell them in your own words what's the benefits of being able to come there every day. Well, it's an outlet. It's an outlet. My mm-hmm. goal is when I became the manager, especially referring to. Albemarle Road, I'll say it. Albemarle mm-hmm. Road is to create a safe haven. Yes. For not just for teenagers, but for youth. Yeah. You know, for for seniors. Mm-hmm. So, and that's what we've done. You know, we we have mm-hmm. we have fitness program for seniors. Oh, that's great. We have youth basketball. Yeah. We have mentoring. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have theater. We have we have something for everybody, and yeah. we're, we're we're open enough to where if you have this this great idea of a program mm-hmm. and there's support, you know, yeah. we, we we'll give it a shot. Mm. So it's a safe haven. That's what I take pride of. A safe haven. Yeah. A outlet. That's a positive so outlet because there's so many outlets, but it's a positive one. Yeah. Um, you're going to gain. <laughs> I can't think of a loss yeah. that you lose yeah. unless you're misprioritizing. But yeah. it's all about gaining and uh, um, improving your overall well being, your life, your health. Mm-hmm. So I think that's incredible, man, because these kids need that. And I, you know what? One thing about North Carolina that I always thought was special. They have a lot of programs, but a lot of free programs yeah, it's for free. kids. And, and, and some of the free programs where I was growing up was it was either hard to get into or it was full, or we just didn't kind of have them, even like sports programs and stuff. I remember growing up in Brooklyn, and to play for a good high school in basketball, you had to go to a Catholic school. Right. It, it was, And then the football programs just weren't there and stuff like that. So I think North Carolina actually... Um, one of the reasons sports alone, they, they dominate, is because it's available. Like, the whole availability... A factor is is there? Have you ever seen like a situation where they've tried to take these programs from like from the recreation centers and things like that? Because I've heard stories where within the like not in Charlotte, but within the last few years, funding and stuff like that has hit really hard. No, we've been very fortunate. We have a, a strong backing, but like I said, a lot of our stuff is free. That's we great. do do like after we do like um, school day out programs. Yeah, we do um, you know youth sports throughout the year. Yeah. And um, those are our main two. My, those are the main two things that we, yeah. that where there's money involved. Yes, yeah. seventy dollar one time fee mm-hmm. for for basketball league. That's not bad. The jersey, everything's included. That's not bad at Parents all. Don't man. pay to get in the game. Mm-hmm. Well, Twenty dollars will keep you. We'll we'll um, do active. We have structured activities with your kid yeah. for eight hours, eight plus hours mm-hmm. on the teacher's work day. Yeah. So it's free or close to free. Yes. You know, but I don't I don't see that change. That's, you know, that's we offer good. scholarships too, so maybe yeah. maybe seventy is a lot for a family. There's, some for some family, yeah, unfortunately, it is. You know there's money mean? set aside for your child to pay. Yeah, to play. That's great, you know, man. You just maybe pay a certain percentage mm-hmm. of the cost, and it's like you know, twenty five percent. I think that's a beautiful thing, man. And, and I, I've seen I've seen like programs become defunded, and I, I've literally seen kids go back to the streets. Right, that could happen. And, oh, it's, yeah. it's sad, man. It's, it's like I've, I've seen I've seen kids that were in programs. And that was the only time they got to eat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's true. They would eat in school. They would go to these after school programs, get whatever they fed, but they were fed and they didn't eat again until breakfast and school the next morning, man. 
And I and I, I know you not to get into too much detail of it, but it's it's got to hit you close to home when oh, you yeah. see stuff like that. With kids on eight, yeah, with kids. On eight. Mm-hmm. And we do have we, we partner with the local school system. Where we okay. Have, um, like when kids are out of school in the summer, yeah, they can come there and get two meals. They can get breakfast. That's great. They can get breakfast and they can get um they can get lunch. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes they give them a little extra. Yeah. To kind of for that afternoon. That's great, man. So the right the more I talk about it, mm-hmm. the more I realize how fortunate yeah. um that I, I am. Mm-hmm. And um, the people that I work with yes. are, you know, they have access to things. Yes. That, that, that. Like you said, mm-hmm. to upstate, that's not the, that's not the case. Yeah. But I don't see a struggle to keep this mm-hmm. thing going. That's great, so, man. And, and I pray that that doesn't hit, man, because I've, se- I've seen gentrification come to different places and everything just go downhill. Because yeah. when gentrification comes, people get bought out, they get forced out. The prices of the neighborhoods go up, just yeah. the cost of living. You know what I mean? And it's never for the people like us and the little guys. It's nothing good happens. Yeah, absolutely. from that. That's only great for the people moving in because it's all about a dollar. When yeah. gentrification comes, they come with a plan, and that plan does not include us mm-hmm. at all. And, you know, like I have, I've, I've always had a huge problem with gentrification because I, I've seen gentrification at the foothills, and I've seen when the mountain came, right. and I and I seen the dangers that it can and bring. And I, I've. The only black people I've ever seen benefit from gentrification were the ones that wanted to sell and get out of that area. Right. You know what I'm saying? But long term, did they really win though? Nah, because they took that one time payment while this person is making millions Absolutely. now from, you know what I'm saying? You know, we know what I feel like. You look at the Jewish community, you look at the Asian community, they stick together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like I was reading something that their dollar bill will fold like four or five times right. before it leaves that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. But then when you look at black neighborhoods, what do we have? We have a laundromat that might not even be owned by us. We'll have a liquor store. We'll have Chinese restaurants. We don't even have our own businesses in our neighborhoods. Well, that's stuff. changed, though, because I will say my uncle, my uncle, my aunt, mm-hmm. they actually owned a laundromat that's here, here in Hickory. That's what's up, you man. Know, I had, I've had families that, mm-hmm. I had, I've had family members who own nightclubs and who okay. own um, stores and and that's how it needs to be. Clothing store. So that's I think great, it's, man. we got this comp- we compete against yeah, each other. We do. We do. We're actually should be working together. Mm-hmm. I, I read some before. I don't know. I don't know if it was the Asian community or the expanded community, but they were saying how I think it was the Asian community how they'll take like five or six families mm-hmm. and they'll put the they'll put the money in one pot. Yes. And each year was, they'll distribute. Yes. Mm-hmm. Jones, White, Johnson. Yes. yes. You know, and that's Chambers. how it should be, man. And before you know it, you got five or six establishments. That's you know, working great. together. And That's we, great. We gotta man. get out of this this crab, crab in the bucket. Um, we really do, man. That mindset, you know. And and I, I really hope at a certain point we can. I, I I really hope at a certain point people like me and yourself, we can like and when we do these interviews and these right. podcasts, we can inspire people to do that. Mm-hmm. Because you, you oh man, like I feel like you have a you have a goal on social media now. And me, like I do a lot of reading, whether it's like online reading, audio books. Sometimes I just go on social media and I read. Mm-hmm. I like to read like motivational quotes and things like that, but I like to read comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it bothers me when I see the negativity and all the energy people put into something. A person will write a whole novel mm-hmm. under a picture to argue with that person, but they won't write out a business plan. They won't write out yeah. like something that's gonna help each other out. And and I feel like um now, you know what's what's crazy? I feel like black people, quote unquote the black community, I feel like the last set of black people to do that would be African American. I feel like every because I've seen I've seen Jamaicans, Trinis, Bayesians, Haitians. I've seen them come together and help build their families. But us African Americans, we ain't doing it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it, it hurts me because I feel like we need to take a page out their book at a certain point and really prosper. And I, I, I don't know what all programs that you guys have at the recreation center, but do you guys have any programs with the kids that teach like financial literacy? And stuff like that, like that'll teach these kids how to write a check and stuff like that. We don't right now, but yeah, I, that's that, that when would I get cool. back, you know, it's something yeah. I, I'm gonna that work would, on. Yes, do it because Please do. you know I have a responsibility. I, like I said earlier, you know, each generation gets better. Yes. You know, that, that's the goal. Yeah. I remember it was, and it's so small, but it's so true. It's like my son, he's mm-hmm. oldest son, he's becoming a pretty good ball player. That's great. And then um, you You're about to get like, that check, brother. Yeah, can, you no, know no, 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 I'm not saying. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying yeah, okay, that. Okay, okay. If he gets a free education. Yeah, that will that's, be that's, that enough. Would be, yeah, but here's my thing: how you know? Of course, I'm I'm older than him. I'm his dad, yeah. you know, and I'm not in the shape that I should be in. Yeah. So, but I play in the one on one. You yeah. know, I, I probably I win a I may win a game. Yeah. 
That's a, I want him to beat me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And I want because I, I want him to be bad. I tell my I tell my kids all the time. Yeah. When you get my age, I, I do I do okay. I do well. I'm blessed. Yeah. But I want you to be twice. Yes. Twice more ahead. Yes. You know I want you to own several mm-hmm. things. I want you to own houses. Yes. Investment properties. I want you, I want you to be on top. Yeah. You know at my age. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the point is I have responsibility. Not that I know. You know, I know how I know how to write a check. I know yes. how to um do a budget. I know how to manage money. Mm-hmm. I have responsibility mm-hmm. to teach the next generation. Yes. Not just yeah. my, my three kids first. Yes. Your first ministry Absolutely. is the home. Absolutely. But God has put me in a position. And the reason I think God has blessed me with this job is mm-hmm. because he, he knows my heart. He yeah. knows where I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the credit back to him. Yes. You know, because mm-hmm. he did it all. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever hit a point? I, and I don't know if this happened to you, but this happened to me. I hit a point after starting my podcast where I kind of realized, I, I was reiterating and re-realized what my purpose was. Right. Yo, does that ever happen to you? Like, you know what? When you thought you was here for this one thing, but you yeah. figured out it was a whole umbrella of stuff right. that you were meant to do. Yeah, I've, I've hit that point. But, you know, the, the biggest threat is, is the, I don't know what you call it, the devil. You want to call it, I don't know what you want to call him, but mm-hmm. I think his goal is to distract. That's true. Yeah, yeah, and man. So I get that's, distracted. That's the thing, though, because you could be like, man, you could be on it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. He wants your attention. Yes. If he's not knocking on your door, mm-hmm. he's already in. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. you, you got to stay focused. But yeah. I think as you evolve, as you, you know, if you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Yes. As you evolve. I like that. As, uh, yeah. You evolve and grow and stuff like that. You're going to find out so much more yes. that God meant for you to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all stem from, you know, it may all stem from your rap or your podcast. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, it's, it, it goes up. You it know? does. It's more. It's much more to it. If know? it's up, then it's up, then it's up. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, and that's something I wanted to ask you because at a certain point in life, I, I had realized, I was like, you know what? I think I'm meant to do more than just X, Y, Z. I'm yeah. meant here to rock out and bong, bong, bong. And but once I realized that, I started seeing more doors open. Yeah. Like in a lot, of, I got a lot of clarity, man, yeah. on a lot of different stuff. And so that's a question I like to ask people because- I don't. I don't think that everyone. I think that sometimes people become so jaded, yeah. and they become so focused on the tunnel vision, they yeah. don't see the whole spectrum yeah. of everything like that, man. And I think it's a great thing that you're doing with the youth and the kids like that. You, you, you. Honestly, you, you might have saved a few lives in the future. Yeah, I want to believe. I want to believe I helped a lot of yeah. people, but a lot of people helped me along the way. So I yeah. say I'm, I'm just playing it for it. Mm-hmm. But I think the more, I, the more I talk, the more, the more I live. Mm-hmm. I, God, I think he, I, I'm I'm convinced that He trusts me with, mm-hmm. with what I'm gonna do for the people. Yes, because my 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 purpose is hope. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yes, and like you talk, you, you, it was I know you was rapping. We, mm-hmm. was, we still do rap. Yeah, but I think it maybe there's a there's a there's a message that you're getting across. It, through it is my, through rapping through podcast. It, it is, and I realized that once yeah. I realized that, like I saw everything different. Yeah, everything was was different, and yeah. and. Like I was never a selfish person, right. but I realized that the purpose wasn't just about me and what I was yeah. doing. It was like a whole wide range of stuff that gotcha. I was like put here to do and responsible for. And it was crazy because I had this one-on-one conversation with people, and a lot of people just didn't get it. Right. They didn't understand what I was saying. Right. And I and I told one dude, I was like, "Okay, you don't get it because you're not there in life yet." Yeah. I said, "Once you get there in life, you're gonna be able to come back to this conversation. And you'll understand a hundred percent what I'm trying to tell you. You know what I mean?" Hopefully one day he'll be there. If he don't, I don't care. <laughs> if you live long enough, you know you'll get it. And yeah. you know, you told him. I think it's on yeah. him at this point. Yeah, facts. You know, we should, we got. You I got, can't make you, you drink the yourself. bottled water, brother. Yeah. I can't. I could just lead you to the to the refrigerator. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But yeah, man, and I think it's a wonderful thing. I think I think a lot of young black children they need positive influences outside of the home, not just in the home. Because you know, like I said, a lot of kids are influenced, right? Yeah. So everybody. The, is, yeah. the thing is. A lot of us parents, like we we know our kids, but we don't know their personalities outside the home all the time. So we know sometimes we'll know who our kids are at home. Yeah. The yes sir, no sir, the yes ma'am, the no ma'am, but we don't know who they are once they get on that school bus. We don't know who yeah. they are once they get around their friends. And and the thing is we wanna at least try to put like the best influence in the possible yeah. to where they can like rebuke the BS. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So hopefully, you know, hopefully, you know, and, and also, um the Kids outside of the home, like say if you interact with a kid at the recreation center or whatever, this kid, his influences at home are one thing, but the influence that he's going to get from a person like you is another thing. You might have more influence to them, to him on a Monday than his own father did or his yeah. own mother did. You know what I'm saying? Because we can work with a kid 
you know, and he goes right. We we get him right. Mm. We get him to look at things the way we're we're saying. Well, we want him to like yeah. okay, he should yeah be respectful. Pull your pants up. Yes, don't be cussing at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Say no to drugs. Mm -hmm. But he goes back into this environment that that thrives off of. Yes, it. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. It is. You, you can only be at the rec so long. You can be only in school mm -hmm. so long. You can only be with the basketball, the travel basketball team yeah. so long. And you got to go back into that yeah. environment. Though. So that, I yeah. think that's that's one of the biggest. The homes kind of. Oh, homes are man. Um, the homes are in trouble. Yeah, you know? they are, man. I yeah. used to, I used to, I used to go to. I went to the first junior high school I went to in Brooklyn. I got kicked out of that. I'm gonna right. keep it with y'all. So I did a sixth grade day. I used to have to take two city buses, go all the way across town, wear a uniform. I hated it. Got kicked out. So I went to the bad one, which was the local one. Right. And once I saw myself starting to get in trouble running around the hood, I was like 13, 14 years old. They had a summer. Uh, 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 we they basically turned the school into a recreation center. Right. So when you were first walking to the school, all the hallways had like. Um, they had pool tables. They had um, ping pong tables. You could play basketball. They had this stuff set up so kids could come in every day. And for, right. I, for like two summers straight, I was literally there every day from like eight in the morning till they closed. And I purposely did that so I wouldn't get in trouble. Right. You know That's what good. I'm saying? And it was like when I would leave and I would walk home, like you said, they go back to a certain type of yeah. environment. When I'm walking back to my block, I'm seeing everybody blood and cripping. Yeah. I'm seeing everybody walking around. This person got a gun on them and stuff like that. So... The, the scary part about it is the happiness that these kids can have while yeah. they're there and then the reality once they leave. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the part that scares me for them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Let me provide hope, though, because I don't, I don't, what we do at the rec center and these Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. that, that does have a purpose. Yeah. Even if the home is, is shaky, if it's not right, which in most situations it's not. Yeah. You know, not most situations. Some situations it's not. Yeah. Over time, over time, I do believe. Mm -hmm. What's been installed at those special places yes. will override. That's great. The evil, yeah. the, the negative influences at the house. Yeah. I, I do I do believe that over time, yeah. if, it's, if it's that strong, mm -hmm. I think that's why I said the, the rec center and the boys and girls club, the schools, basketball yeah. coach, we gotta work. We gotta work even harder yes. if we know mm -hmm. that home ain't right. That's right. But I think mm -hmm. with God's help, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And us just pushing our determination. Yeah. I think it will override that. I think you guys got gotta keep pushing that, man. I yeah. think that's a that's a great fact that I have to it. Because you you know, I always feel like when it comes to good, I feel like when it comes to evil, I feel like when it comes to certain things, one has to be stronger than the other. Yeah. One yeah. has to be stronger than the other because even though we have evil influence in the world, I'm I'm a firm believer in God. If evil was that strong, then the whole world we would just be walking right. around in turmoil. Yeah. yeah. We ain't fully there yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're not fully there yet. So due to the fact that we're not fully there in turmoil, that mean that that has to mean that good is working harder yeah. and and whatnot. But a lot of people don't see that, man. Yeah. A lot everything from like the hidden satanic messages and hip hop nowadays and stuff like that is kind of scary. And like I'm I'm happy that my daughter is into pop music and anime and she don't listen to like Cardi B and stuff All like right. that. And I'm not shitting on Cardi B. I'm sorry I'm not doing that. But the fact that my daughter's into that, not that, I think is a great yeah. thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. But you know, unfortunately, it's not like it's not like that for all kids. Right. Like I, I told a story a while back. I was driving a while back and I came to a light and there was a girl, I don't know she had to be like 16 or whatever. And she was like looking at my car like she was ready to holler at me. I told her, I said, yo, excuse my mouth. I said, yo, don't fucking look over here. I told her straight like that. I said, yo, go to school, go wherever you're going. Don't look over here. Don't, don't do that. Because at the come on, I'm a 30 something year old grown man. Like I'm nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're gotcha. not doing that. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's scary, man. Yeah. It's scary. Like some of the things that these these kids are subject to, you know. It's it's you can have a classroom, 30 kids, right? And the the kids sitting on this side and the kids sitting on this, that's their whole their life could be like totally different, man. But right. it, it's it's a scary thought. And I and I think that we need more recreation centers that are kind of help evolve these kids in where they should be in life, man, and, and stuff like that. You Like you said, you guys, the influence you guys might have for the four or five hours y'all have them yeah. might be what they go to yeah. at night and yeah. go to sleep to. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and it's scary, man. So I want to give you your flowers now and say congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, man. Or, nah, no problem, man. Congratulations. I know some of these kids, they probably piss you off sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're just, <laughs> we've had moments. Yeah, I know. I, tight moments. I'm pretty sure you got to keep, upset, your, you keep your composure, yeah. you know? But, it, you know, it's worth it. Yeah, I'm it's worth it. Um, plus, I'm, they're the future. Yeah, they're the future. That's it's going to take man. more than my three. Yes, <laughs> it's going to take more than my three to uh -huh. keep this thing going. Yeah, yeah. no, that's great, man. That's you. You ever you ever uh, look at your kids and be like, "Yo, y'all generation soft?" Because I be telling my kids that all the time. I, I don't think they're soft. I think that I think 
they have a lot of access. So they're they're yeah. they're spoiled. They're what do they call them? Gen Z or something? Is it Gen Z? Is that the term that they call them? I think so. I read that the other yeah. day. I was like the first time I saw They're that. very fortunate. Let me just word. I think they're very fortunate. Yeah. But hopefully they'll 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 take they'll capitalize yeah. off of their fortune. Okay. You know? Because like I said, access to, to like the YouTube. I mean like math problems away. You know, yeah. there's so much. You got phones at 12, 13 years old. You got a cell phone. Man, yo, I mean, man. You, you got a TV. I mean, TV, you got cable. I mean, there's so much yes. that, um, now we had some of that stuff, but man, mm -hmm. they got, they, they're very fortunate. When they had the, um, when all of the schools were full remote last year, and my daughter was like, she was like, oh, I hate it. She's like, it's so hard. I'm ready to go back to school. I said, you crazy. I said, y'all lucky. I said, y'all understand. I said, yo, if I was... During this generation now, I said I will be in my drawers on my iPad, cheating every day, wow. getting A's on everything. <laughs> I'd rather be in school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, but that, yeah. I, was, I was more of an introvert, man. Like, you know, that's what I told her. I said, yo, I said, there's a pandemic. I said, you don't understand how blessed you are. You could just wake up. I said, y'all still be late for online school. I was like, how was your generation late for yeah. the computer? You know what very I mean? fortunate. I said, it is weird, man. You know, but my sons was looking at me because I told him, I was like, yo, my generation, we would have washed the generation straight up, mm -hmm. straight like that. You know what I mean? He was looking at me like I was crazy. But I was like, I said, yo, y'all have so much more things now that y'all blessed with that y'all don't even see. Yeah. I said, y'all cry when the Wi Fi is down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, and I earlier you know, I kind of I didn't want to put down the generation before us mm -hmm. when I was saying how the you know physical punishment and stuff like that you yeah. know some of the yelling and some some of the things that that we we feel like in the black community we have to do mm -hmm. to make our kids stronger and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But we would not be where we are today if it wasn't for their hard work. That's why I have yes. so much of appreciation for senior citizens. Yeah, they will always if I'm if I'm in a facility. Yeah, they will always be a top priority. Yes, they paved the way. They did. They, they were the ones that they get no credit on. They get the ones no that had credit. to go. You know, you could go to this water fountain. Yes, you know, you you had. I mean, my grandma was telling me how first time she had a chance to vote. They wow. were saying they, she couldn't. You know, they couldn't read. It's like, yeah. I, I can't speak for nobody else, but yeah. I can read. No, but she was saying, like, I, exactly. I was a valedictorian on my class. Exactly. But her and my grandfather mm -hmm. and my mom, my uncle, they 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 paved the way. You and, know? and during her generation, not to cut you off, she could have yeah. got killed just yeah, for knowing yeah, how to read. Yeah, yeah. Scary. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I always say, like, you know, I don't think my prayers have been answered yet. I always say that I am the answer to my great grandmother's prayers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I really do, because I'm 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 so fortunate. I like yeah. nothing is perfect. Yeah. But I I, I walk I walk. A walk in a good path. That's great. You know, that's a great um, way to look at it, man. Yeah. A really good way to. I, you know, speaking about the older generation, I remember when Obama had first won the first term, and I got an on guard rest so she was from from Illinois, my aunt Jean, and she passed away. Before she passed away, she was alive during that time, right. and um, I had screenshot the video I saw on YouTube when he came to North Carolina, mm -hmm. and she was in her wheelchair sitting there, and she wow. was like, I think she was shaking his hand, and she was like right behind him, smiling and stuff like right. that, right now. I hate getting into politics and stuff like that. I, I'm not gonna ask you what your political party is. I'm a, I'm a Democrat. I still hate politics, right. even though I'm a Democrat. I hate all politicians. Not all politicians. I just don't agree with the stuff they do because I'm a firm believer that we all can't win. Somebody's have gonna have to lose once one party right. wins or whatever. Right now, I've, I've sat and talked about people on their stands with Obama and things like that. Right, and I told her, dude, I said, look at it like this. I said, imagine if you was born in the 20s. Imagine mm -hmm. if you was born in the 30s or 40s. And you were old at the time that he won. You're in your 70s, and your 80s, right? All right? And you see a black man win and become president, but you couldn't even vote or get a full vote when you was younger, when you turned 18. I said, imagine you see a black man win and you think about 56 years ago when you couldn't drink from a clean water fountain. I mm -hmm. said, think about that, then come back and talk to me about right. that. I said, whether you feel like he messed up in office or not, it was a win for us. Right. It was a win for I us. I think he was a wonderful president. And I do. I think I do, he did a I, decent I, job, man. Yeah. I think yeah. he did a great job. Yeah. And I am a Democrat as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think one thing I was talking about racism earlier today. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think it will always mm -hmm. exist to a certain extent. Yeah. But I think what we need to most, and I know that I can only speak from personal, like you said, you're a Democrat. Yeah. You know, I I I, I believe in I believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think that the world needs the real Jesus. I, I think there's two different ones. I, I confuse how yeah. people would would in one breath. Yeah, they would praise God and talk about God. And I love God. Mm -hmm. In the next breath, they would belittle a man not because of what he did, but because of the color of his skin. That's not God. That's nah. not Jesus. Thank you. So I think the Jesus, the Jesus that I that, that I love, that, yeah. I, that I worship, that, that I will always stand up yes. for, is the one that loves Thank any you. and everybody. 
So to the people listening that that praise God but hate people because they speak another language, you capping like yeah. like just like the kids yeah. say nowadays is all cap. I don't think you can do that. I don't think that. I don't. Work. I don't. And, you know I, and I, mean? I pray. I pray that before your day ends, mm-hmm. you get right. And, you know? and I, listen, I mean, man, that's, that's not love. I, to talk about Jesus Christ, right? A lot of y'all gotta understand, right? A, a lot of when you come to areas like here, Catawba County, you go to areas like that. And they kind of like, I hate getting into the whole color skin of Jesus Christ thing, but the way he's whitewashed and stuff, y'all do realize there's a high probability he didn't speak English, right? You know, Jesus Christ was born in Jerusalem. So he had tan skin, an accent, and, and nappy hair. I just want to point that out for y'all. Y'all need to understand that. You know what I'm saying? So I, you can't praise Jesus Christ and then hate people from other countries and hate people for the color of their skin. Yeah. It's, it just, it, the two don't equate, man. You sound crazy. Like, yeah. I, and I've, I've actually had this conversation with white people. Yeah, and it kind of got mad when I said that, but it's like it's the truth. Like you, you kind of you got act like he was born over here, right? He wasn't, he wasn't, fam. Like, but you, you know, and, and back to the whole Obama thing, and and I, I'm happy that during my my the time I've lived, I've seen a black man win not once but twice, yeah, and, and stuff like that. I think that's a blessing all in itself. And, and you know, I was listening to a um, I, I was I forgot what hip hop song it was, but he said Obama gave us hope. And a lot of us black men should have taken hope from that. Yeah, yeah. Should have taken hope. Should have taken. We we take hope from Michael Jordan and people like in LeBron, LeBron James, James, but we can't take hope from the dude that became president. Yeah. Like that's crazy to me. And the VP, the vice president of the United States yeah. of America, is a black woman. You know what? Yeah. Even what, what? though I voted for her and and Joe Biden, right? I like Kamala Harris. I like the way she carries herself. I don't. I'm not too happy with some of the stuff she did when she was, I think, the DA in, in San Francisco with some of the policies she had. But then again, I'm not in her shoes, and, yeah. and I'm not a politician, and I'm pretty sure that was a lot to deal with with some of the situations that they made. Thank God Trump is not in office anymore. Tuh, you know what I'm saying? But I've had I've I've had like almost arguments with people. Yeah, because I he, he, I think you know I will say I feel he promoted hate. He did, and that's did. that's not right. That's you know right you know what? For a person to sit here and really idealize him and the things he did, I have to look at them. Yeah. like so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I, I see if they're pushing the party, mm-hmm. but they if they're pushing the man. Yes, considering how, how I mean, for them they they bum guard, um, bum rush the capital. Jane oh Wilson's yeah, my birthday. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, I'm like, who does this? Yeah, you woke up on your birthday and you you watching yeah. them seeing yeah, it was out. I think when my wife was having lunch in like Nashville or something. Mm-hmm. Like, what's going on? Yeah, but and it's like when Nashville was probably happy, wasn't it? No, I, oh, no okay. I, would, I, would, I would put that on Nashville. I wouldn't put that on Ashley. Shouts out to <laughs> Ashley's a very open city. Okay. I wouldn't put that on Ashley. Yeah. No. Uh, other parts, yeah, but not Ashley. Mm-hmm. But um, it wasn't what the country needed. We don't no. need anything like that. No. We really, we need the real God. We need. Yeah. We, we. That's what we need. You know. Mm-hmm. The, the, the one I the one I believe in. Yeah. You know. It's crazy because yo, look at all the stuff that happened towards the end of Trump presidency between the bigotry, the hatred, the racism, the open Karens. So many black people losing their lives. Uh, uh, remember what happened in the aftermath of George Floyd yeah. and everything like that. I was I was still up north. I was actually in Jersey at the time. I right. wasn't in New York no more. Crazy thing is, I seen it. The when I seen all of the the protests and stuff like right. that. So I was hanging out back in Brooklyn. So me not thinking and forgetting everything that was going on. I right. me being cheap, which after that I learned my lesson. I said, Nah, I ain't paying no toll to go back to Jersey. I'm gonna go downtown Brooklyn. I should have jumped right on the highway. By my own crib, I would have been right back. I cut through it. It took me like two and a half, three hours to get home. Yeah. And it looked like I was on the set of the third Batman with Christian Bell when they was fighting right. Bane. On literally the Barclays Center's on the left where the Nets right. play at. I'm on I'm going down this side. It was about a thousand, two thousand people with smoky from tear gas. And there was about three hundred cops in riot gear with machine guns, man. Right. And it was crazy. And I was thinking to myself, this is not the wave. Yeah. This is this is not the way. Well, they were trying to get their voices. That, yes, they were. They you were. Know? And but when I say okay, so for the people listening, when I say it's not the way, I'm not talking about particularly the protesters. I'm talking about where the country was at causing us yeah. to do that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because everything comes with a cause and effect. Yeah. And to and, and I'm a stand, I don't care who don't like it. Y'all forced our hand. Uh, they America forced the hands of black people when it came to that. And my problem with America is America is that kid that'll hit you and then run back to their parent. Oh, they're wow. trying to hurt me. That's what America is. Wow. You're, you're, you're that you're that you're that punk ass kid <laughs> that want to hit somebody and run. You know what I'm saying? We've all seen kids like that. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so it's 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 me. I'm I'm I've always been pro black. I've always looked at things from from different perspectives. I think y'all need to stop letting 
people kill us and taking them for Burger King after that. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was a low blow. You know what I'm saying? And, but it's it's I'm glad that Trump is not in office no more yeah. because the cause and effect of what he did. And then now, have you seen that he's trying to start another social media or something like it's called the Truth? The I truth don't doubt app. it. I, you know, I, I just I don't I don't engage. I don't blame you when it comes to him. I I haven't mentioned his name in probably like yeah. months. Yeah, that's so, yo. Listen, me. You you messed my day up saying it. Yeah, my like, bad, no, man. Listen, no, you can, man, just, just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't engage. It's the hard part is whenever, um, well, for me as a parent, whenever you know this type of stuff was happening, and I had to sit and talk to my kids about this idiot, yeah. and say that's why right. he's on t- in and why he's president and stuff like that. And yo, man, I'm I, I'm I'm actually thankful that he's not in office anymore. I, I'm to the point, I don't care how bad Biden does if he does bad. I'm not saying he's doing a bad job. Yeah. I voted for the man. But if he does a bad job, I literally don't care. I'm just happy Trump is not in office. Yeah. That's where I'm that's where I'm at with it, man. And um I, I think politics and, and and religion, I feel like they're purposely kept apart. I feel like the power the people that control the world are afraid to bridge that gap and bring them together. I don't know how your your religious thoughts, your your spiritual thoughts. Mm-hmm. And not interfere with your, uh, and not overlap your political thoughts. Exactly. I never really, I really never really understand that. That's my personal views. Because, because evil people run politics. Yeah, but you treat you should treat everybody fairly. Mm-hmm. Man, a man. If if I'm gonna put you back, overlook yeah. you. Yeah. It's because of your character. Yes. You know, whether you are black, white, yes. gay or straight, mm-hmm. that shouldn't prevent you from getting a position. It shouldn't. That shouldn't prevent you from living over here. Mm-hmm. Over there, if you can afford it, exactly. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I agree with you 100, percent man. And you, does it bother you that there's so much openly evil stuff going on right now? Well, like, I think, yeah, it's a lot, man. Yeah, it is, and, and I think it will always exist. It all, mm-hmm. We'll never live a life where God isn't necessary. Mm-hmm. We'll never live a life where yeah. God isn't necessary. But this, this is the, in my opinion, since I've been alive, this is the first time. We've seen like evil, like open, open. Oh yeah, like this is. I don't think this has ever happened before. Well, I think I think Trump played a part in that. Oh, I think yeah. one thing he did do. Yes, he did. Is he he un- took the cover off? He did. Took the cover off, and now it's it's all out there in the open. Mm-hmm. But I said I said we need we everybody. I mean we just we need the real Jesus. We need the real God. Mm-hmm. The one I, one I talk about. Yeah, is love. God is love. Yes, and that's that's. Talk, belittling somebody, overlooking somebody because of the color skin. Mm-hmm. That's not love. It's not. That's hate. It that's is. discrimination. That's that's it that's is. the way of the devil. You yes. know what I'm saying? So I'm I think that's what we need. We need to really mm-hmm. it's not so much about the church. It's about the relationship with God. Yeah. You know? And I'm a firm believer. I don't I don't go to church, but I've built a very great relationship right. with God on, on my own personal basis and stuff like that. I want to go to church one day and I want to get into it. I'm so much an introvert. It's hard for me to do it. It's just it's not that sitting in the house of God. It's just being around people is, is the hard part for me, which is something I've always battled with, man. But back to like the openly evil stuff, man. I, I, want, I don't want to keep you too long, but I want to really like see yeah, what yeah. your take is on this, yeah. right? Because you are a man of God, right? Did, did you see that they, they built that satanic church in Detroit, I think a couple years ago? You can watch a whole video on it. So there was in Detroit... A local news uh, station. It actually went national. I don't know if you got, if you guys seen it down here. The pastor looks evil. Like his right. eyes is red. They, when you walk into it, they have a big Satan statue that goes from the floor to the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Now, why would they? What would possess the government? The government approved it. it. Had to get approval. But you right. know, for for them, it's all about money. Right? How do you feel about that? I think it's all about money. I think it's all about show. But I think it, mm. it all just goes back, like I said earlier, like you know, we never live in a life where he's not necessary. Mm-hmm. That's that's our opportunity. Yeah. That's when we should lean more yeah. to him than yeah. ever. Yeah. Because like I say, evil, evil is gonna always be yeah. around. Yeah. It's always gonna be around. That is the devil is working twenty four seven. That's you that's know? a fact. He drinks Red Bull. He if just... he's not if he's not knocking <laughs> on the door, if he's not knocking on the door, he's in the door. That's a fact. You that's know? a fact. Or he's yeah. on the way. That's crazy, so, man. So as okay. This is either a yes or no question. Don't get mad at me for asking you this. You walking down the street, you chilling, and a Satan worshiper try to pop off on you. What you doing? You swinging on him? What, what we doing? I'm swinging. Ah, yeah. I mean, you got to defeat yeah, yourself. That's I mean, what I'm you talking about. Can't be so deep. That yeah, you, I'm saying that you gonna um, work it up, man. Don't don't be a talk punk. about. It. I mean, yeah, you're washed up, brother. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus isn't a punk. You know, um, I'm not gonna be one either. Put the hands know? of the Lord on him, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh man. Yeah. Man. But yo, listen, I appreciate you for coming through to the Life of Product Podcast. This is episode 42. I have my good friend, um, Ivan Jones. Tell them that website that they can find you on one more time. MyMentor.com. 
Um, this type of Ivan Jones. It's, mm-hmm. it's under the under Tony Gaskins. So it's a mm-hmm. pretty reputable organization to be a part of. So and I do transformation coaching mm-hmm. when it comes to like maybe marriage, parent. I mean parenting. Yeah. Um, work with student athletes mm-hmm. and just you know career, career, career. That's great. Um, going from like maybe from college into the workforce, or you just had a de- uh, standstill in your career. Mm-hmm. He writes a transformation coaching to get you over that hump and on to your best life. That's what's up, man. This man just so to y'all heavy. Like he's on his Tom Cruise stuff. What was that? What was that movie? Tom Cruise played the agent, Jerry Maguire. Jeremy, yeah, Jerry Maguire. That's what's up, yeah. man. You like the yeah. Jerry Maguire Charlotte, brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trying so for those of y'all that's listening, we are gonna put his um the website and we're gonna put his email address in the description. So if you guys need his services, right. well, you I'm pretty sh- sure a lot of y'all do. Book the homie and let's get it popping. Like the product podcast, episode 42. I'm out, baby. Yeah.